Lighting would be the second key factor that we need to worry about. Um, if your lighting is offset, you're getting wet too much from one side uh, or, or another, too much from the top, you've got too many windows open, you have too, many, uh, too much going on behind you, or anything of that, uh, of that nature, you want to make sure that your lighting is even, or what we call flat. So you're gonna be lit from several different directions. We need to make sure that the lighting behind us is also just as good as the lighting in front of us. So a lot of times we will take a light from up above, uh, down below, or something like that to give a little bit of outline. You, um, if you take a look at um, more higher end productions, that almost looks green screened, you know, where the, the person is standing out from the background, whatever that is. It's because he's lit really well. And so what we try to do is light from several different directions. A typical video lighting setup, depending on how you are, uh, how you're arranged and how you can do this, is usually a key light, which is pretty close to where the camera is, a fill light, which comes in from one side of the other, and a backlight. Obviously, you want to keep the backlight out of the shot as much as possible because you don't need a stand behind you. So instead of doing that, we used color, fill light, and created a set. So uh, with the lights on the ground, which we'll show you in just a second, we're able to create a little bit of a color on the wall to uh, keep it from being a boring white backdrop. A couple of extra uh, lights here, uh, one red, one blue, just to kind of show color differences and things like that. Not all cameras see uh, blue well, not all cameras see red well. It just depends on how the, uh, how the camera is made. So I'm worried about color temperature across the front line. If uh, a lot of LEDs have a, have a daylight white look to them, so super ultra white, bright white, it almost looks blue in how white it is. And with uh, technology changing and things like that, they're trying to come up with an LED version of, uh, of a tungsten fixture. Tungsten meaning your old standard lamp color uh, that, that you would have at your house. We're changing those slowly over to LED and they've created an amber colored LED that goes in there to give that more of a warm glow look. You, whatever color you use, whether it's the daylight white, the orange uh, tungsten version of that light, you want to make sure that it's an even color temperature across. You don't want to use a blue light here and a yellow light here. You don't want to put red light in front of you. Um, we're not Broadway. We're not drama. We're not trying to create these artsy looks. We're trying to create a unified video where we see an even color or even wash of light across the front, even if it does get a little bit on the wall. Um, uh, we try to cut a lot of that out due to the Hollywood magic that we do in video editing, but we want to make sure that, that our lighting is even. We don't want any dark spots. We don't want any, any uh, a lot of pastors have this problem with deep eye sockets. So sometimes we'll do lights from up underneath. Um, I'm in the process right now of actually putting in side lighting as well as my front lighting and my back lighting. My back lighting is more artsy. I use a little bit more, uh, a lot more color back behind and I could even use different color temperatures because it's a backdrop. Um, anything that is production lighting, trying to make sure that your videos look good, needs to be even. Now, on, on the ground over here, which, which we can point out, um, we'll adjust the camera a little bit. I'm using an LED uh, lighting fixture. Um, uh, I'm using a bar to create a wider wash, and then I'm using a, a PAR light. Uh, it used to be called a parabolic luminized reflector. Um, which uh, they used to use in concerts a lot. So now we've changed that over to an LED fixture and we, we uh, keep calling it a PAR. The same LEDs are in both of these fixtures. I just have them set differently so that this one's blue and this one's red just to show you color differences. These, uh, they can pretty much do any color I want them to with just a little bit of a, a color mixing. I can do it on the fixture itself or I can use a lighting console and adjust the red, green, and blue pixels that are actually in the fixture to make it uh, a different color. So we're, I'm gonna talk about fixtures for just a little bit. Not everybody has the budget to do massive productions. 
it doesn't matter. So we use what we have. A lot of times you can go to Lowe's, Home Depot, whatever, and grab one of these little um, reflector uh, scoop lights that they have just sitting on the shelf. It can be anything. Take a floodlight and put it in there. Make sure, however, um, the reason why I'm not using this particular bulb is it's too much of a spot. It's a narrow flood. The light I'm using up here actually has a, a diffuser over it and is creating more of an even light. Um, so, uh, so what we try to do is create an even wash light across the front and then use the other lights, whether we use a colored bulb or a piece of gel over that, to create a um, to create our background, and uh, and it can be an LED and things like that. If you're in a dimming situation, be careful with your LEDs. The drivers in those LEDs tend to get a flicker in them, especially when you start to drop them down. So you can't just go pick up a professional LED at Lowe's or Home Depot. That is something that has to be purchased through some sort of theatrical lighting supply. All right. You're wondering about diffusion. How can we make it work? I can't, I can't get a piece of diffusion gel from a lighting company in fast enough. So what do I do? Go to uh, your local grocery store. Uh, go to your printer, something like that. Grab a piece of paper, grab a piece of wax paper. You can diffuse your lights by putting that um, piece of paper or wax paper on the outside of it. Make sure it doesn't have printing on it like this one does. Um, just to create a, a softer look across your lighting fixture. If it's a hot light, obviously you want it to sit out from there so you don't burn your paper up or your wax paper. That will happen. So taking that away from it just a little bit, duct tape and a, and a paint stick would, would get it out far enough. So it's just a matter of how, how much you want to pull that out. So um, try to make sure that you are using those things to your to your advantage. Another thing you can do, um, even if you don't have time, you have a white ceiling, you have a white wall, you can bounce those lights off the wall instead of being direct. So I actually have a light down here uh, to my right that is bounced off the ceiling to give me a little bit more lighting up here. So um, it's not more for lighting my eye sockets as much as it is to make my lighting more even here without being such a, such a spotlight. So use what you have. There's, there's a lot of ways you can do it and experiment with it. Good lighting is still pretty subjective. Bad lighting, everybody has an opinion.